Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about a Netflix show, Transformers War for Cybertron, Season 3, Kingdom. I've done two podcasts on the first two seasons, which I really enjoyed. I'll sum it up as the first season I love, really tight. Really great story, bringing me back to the characters I love from my childhood. I've explained this. I'm a big toy fan and Transformers. I even role play and Game Master Transformers as my friends play them, so on and so forth. But the first season I really thought was really good, really tight. And the second season started getting a little flimsy. This It wasn't as cohesive and tight, but there were so many elements that I loved. And I'm going to sum up Kingdom in that sense also. It's a little too out of place and jarring, but there's so much stuff I love. They brought in the Beast Wars characters, which I think is probably the best Transformers um, show, technically. Just the story writing and the characterization, the growth on that show, let alone the, at the time, new way of doing animation. Adding Beast Wars to the lore... Mixing it together, I thought was great. But in giving a brief description without too many plots and spoilers, season one is the last fight on Cybertron. Optimus decides to get rid of the All Spark. He thinks it's a mistake. And season two, he goes to retrieve it. It's the journey and Megatron and Decepticons and other factions all race for this artifact let's call it season three is the final destination chapter and a new beginning so that should give you an idea of how the series is set up season one is siege it's the final war they flee cybertron get rid of the old spark season two we got to find the old spark it was a mistake gotta bring it back to cybertron it's the journey in season three is we found the old spark. How can we get back to Savitron? Can we fix things? But I'm going to try to be more of a critic here and say season three is a little chaotic. You know what? Thinking about it, I could say, or I would recommend season one needs two more episodes. Season two needs three more episodes. And season three needs three more episodes. This needed a little bit more of fleshing out. They had so much potential with the relationships between Megatron and Optimus, some of the sub characters, the general theme of what's going on, and Optimus's uh, quote unquote mistake. Uh, I think season three drops the ball in that case. As a fan of Transformers, I'm giddy as a kid, I love it. I'm a little thrown off by the voices, though. I'm such a fan of Beast Wars that hearing different people do the voices threw me off. But I can imagine for other people, it's not going to matter at all. It's not going to be an issue. So, voice acting is top-notch. The animation is amazing. Sometimes it's breathtaking. The situations and the themes from episode to episode is the weakness, I think. I... So desperately was, I mean, I was smiling and I was so happy to have really good portrayals of the Beast Wars characters mixed in with the, what do you call it, G1 or the Generation 1 Transformers. And bringing in Generation 2 and 3 in a sense, there's a split type timeline thing, a little time travel. But, spoilers, you get to see Galvatron. They try to strengthen that link between Megatron becoming Galvatron. If you're not familiar with the Transformers movie with Unicron, this is all bubbling underneath. But when you look at the character arc and the real powerful portrayal of Optimus and his role, it it just feels like it needed more. It needed more um, foundation. I thought the season one was so good. It was so tight-knit, and it kind of had that 
on point attention span and you just float along with it and were kind of riveted from season two and season three i find myself kind of lost in my head sometimes like piecing things together what is this is this referencing that is this flowing from this it doesn't feel as tight on point and again this is just me trying to be more of a critic and you know not so objective because I love Transformers. I am the biggest fan. Well, you know, not the biggest, but I even have toys around the house and Beast Wars, G- Generation One. I saw a great video where um, you have a toy now. I think it's like seven hundred dollars, and it's Optimus, and you can control him with your voice, and he transforms on his own. It was fucking amazing. Um, but I'm getting off the point. I came to season three of War of Cybertron, War for Cybertron, the trilogy, really excited, but a little tempered because season two, which I like a lot, I noticed some of the flaws and the cracks showing. Season three kind of highlights those uh, cracks and does a good job of smoothing them over, kind of hiding them, but it just doesn't feel as epic. Now... It does have an ending to its storyline and a really strong what's going to happen next type of thing going on. I don't like to give too many spoilers on these uh, podcasts, especially when it just came out, you know, really recently. Try to give my surface thoughts, but there's just a real strong interest in what's going on, but not a super excitement for what's next, but again, this could go back to just me having this, you know, quirk about me already thinking of the adventure, of me writing the story myself and seeing where it leads. I could totally see people going, you're crazy, this was great. Um, I was riveted, I was from beginning to end, I love that they did this. And I, I try to understand that, but I'm going to say... I would think people might agree that season two and three are a little less of a quality. Doesn't maybe ruin the enjoyment because I love these three chapters and I really hope they go for more. There's a lot of strong themes and uh, consequences of actions that they really wanted to highlight. And they did it great through the series. Um, War, ideologies, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, it comes to a point where there's a moment where, uh, I would like to say, um, seek the truth and keep asking yourself why questions until it hurts, until you can come to the realization of, you know, the truth of who you are, you know, what your purpose is. And I think Optimus, Megatron, they go through that great in this trilogy. Now the side characters might suffer for that. And here and there, they try to mix it and bring it back. And they had a great opportunity here. And they did it pretty well with Beast Wars. Because you've got this um, weird timeline thing. Because technically, Beast Wars, the Maximals and the Predacons, are the future of the Generation 1 Transformers until we know. So sometime in the future, the Transformers... I guess evolution is to become um, more, you know, fluid, robotic, and they take the form. So instead of getting cars or vehicles, this, I guess, crew from Transformers gets sent to prehistoric Earth millions of years in the past. So it's the future characters in the past, and they mimic animals. So Optimus Primal is the... uh, Gorilla, there's Rhinox, there's the Rhino, Cheetah, that that theme. And it's done great. But that whole thing is kind of weird because, like I said, it's the future characters. Because to them, Optimus in the past got rid of the old Spock and doomed Cybertron. But they're in the past and on the travels from Optimus Prime, his ship and portals and dimensions of the dead they wind up with the 
Maximals on presumably Earth, and I really love what they did with Dinobot. It's a real favorite. But I gotta again say that as a huge fan of Beast Wars, the voices kind of threw me off. Even when the guy tries to do a little bit of rat trap, and it just doesn't seem as genuine. And I know this is a nitpick because it's just me loving it so much. Because I really can't give Beast Wars enough credit. It, it's one of those things where I hated it. Just from bias. Like, I am Generation 1 Transformers. Remember when the toys first came out? The TV show, cartoon coming out, the movie, everything. Comic books, lunchboxes, the whole deal. And then I saw this thing called Beast Wars, and it was them with animals. And just by looking at it, I just got disgusted. And then it was like one Saturday morning or Sunday morning. I left it on, was doing something, and I was captivated. I I kind of apologized in my head to these creators because they're great. I mean, it's better than the original Transformers, hands down. It's just that, you know, you love the original one, and there are robots and vehicles where... This plays with the animation. It's a little different. It's 3D type. It, it tried to push the boundaries. And by the time it gets to its season two, three, it connects everything to the original Transformers and just knocks it out of the park and then goes into Beast Machines, which I love. It's just only one season, but it puts a nice, you know, it's the icing on the cake. It ends everything. This chapter three, War of Cybertron trilogy, it does have a wrap up. And it is going to lead into something else if it's, you know, I don't know about this day and age, pandemics, so on and so forth. If now there's something to realize, you know, it's not maybe numbers at the theaters and this could be the way to go. I mean, looking at my playlist and the things I've been putting on, I've been getting great content for me. I mean, not that it, it's, you know, you get what I'm saying. And so much stuff to watch and great animation shows. and. I think it's probably the way to go. I could see this continuing. It's going to be a weird blend, for sure. And I think they um, did enough to win me over on the trilogy as a whole. But, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. I think the quality of Season 2 and Kingdom Season 3 is just a little less. It's the co- the story is not so cohesive. There's a lot of jarring things going on. You're trying to keep track of things, but holy shit, some of the arcs are amazing. Some of the little interplays just um really captivate you at times. They really put a lot of effort into humanizing these robots and giving real character depth to them. And that's why I think they needed another couple of episodes per season just to, you know, kind of smooth things out and have little proper lulls and proper arcs that kind of don't feel rushed around the beginning and edge uh, endings. But again, this is done well. It's shot, looks great. Animation is always on point, it seems. They have a great way of giving the element of what you're looking at. And what I mean by that is you're looking at the Generation 1 Transformers we know and love from the originals. You have Beast Wars, totally different animation styles that were done on TV. And they try to bring that into one animation style. And there's even a little bit of flavor for when, after the Transformers movie that came out with Season 3, I think, and it was... You know, the next generation was Rodimus Prime, Ultra Magnus, that type of thing. Even that art is given a little bit of flavor that lets you know it's from this era. Now, they do do one thing that kind of, not surprised me because they gave it away. But I was a little surprised at how they played with the lore and the myths. Like, it, it looks like they are aware of the deep history of Transformers, that's for sure. But I think there's someone there who's giving the pointers and they're taking things and changing them up to surprise people who know the law so well. So as someone who knows about the golden discs on Beast Wars and how it ties into the original, they took a little twist on it. They take a twist on um, 
their purpose because when the original Maximals and Predacons on the show go on their mission, it's kind of a different storyline, obviously, or even, I don't know if it's for sure, but you consider all these things alternate universes, alternate timelines, and they even mention it here as Galvatron, who comes from the Transformers movie, you know, Future, is explaining things in a little bit of talk here and there. There's, there's some surprises and twists, but they're not too super obvious, but the character arcs are pretty much straightforward. And, again, a little bit more room here and there, and this could have been fabulous, excellent, 10 out of 10. So, I'm so happy with Season 1, and I'm really happy with the trilogy as a whole. But, it's that critic part of me, you know, that part that looks like things and tries to analyze it. I can recognize what people say, if people say, it didn't knock it out of the park again. It didn't come to the finish line. But the concepts are there. What you see is amazing. They really do like, some incredible things and put this story in a place where it could surprise a lot of people because you don't see it much. But there could be people who could correct me and say, oh, no, there's this IDW comic that it's running from and the product line has its own storyline. A lot of these things will have, uh, you know, Wolf of Cybertron story, uh, toy line, and they'll take the story from the back of the box. I mean, that's what they used to do back in the day, because TV shows like this were made to sell toys. And I don't think that's the way it is anymore. So the storytelling changes are excellent. Just maybe need to be refined if you bring it back. I really appreciated, again, the Beast Wars aspect of this because as someone who uh, who has said I didn't give it a chance, I hated it and then kind of had to own up to it you know, it feels like I did a disservice to like how I could have loved Beast Wars two years earlier and been such a fan, and I mean a big fan I got so many of the toys back in the day so I guess to sum this up Transformers The War for Cybertron Trilogy Chapter 1 was Siege, excellent, amazing, tight, heartfelt, uh, you know, really gives you that feeling of what you're being prepared for. Chapter 2 is Earthrise, kind of a misnomer because of spoiler, they don't get to Earth until the last episode, <laughs> and it's a weird, we refer to like, you know, it should be like the something journey. It should be because it, it really is about the journey. You know, at the end of season one, Siege, they are off the planet on the arc, you know, Teltran 1, and they're going to go find the old Spark, leading you to believe they're going to mimic the TV show, but they kind of, like I said, they put a twist on it. But the second season, Earthrise, it's not until the light. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think it's the last fucking couple of minutes of the show where they show Earth. So it is kind of weird, you know, it's like misleading. But okay, the story's there, that's the journey. And, uh, you know, I'm so happy these things are being done with high quality. I think I'm a little biased here and there. So and not only am I biased because I love the material as a kid and growing up with it, it's that I, you know, kind of maybe fancy myself a writer in my own way. And it just doesn't... um always drive it with a, you know, because I got 18 different directions, adventures are going in, and where the characters are going, and I, it's just how my brain works, so, I'm really happy with this trilogy as a whole, I just wish they refined the second and third season, gave it a little more room to breathe, and I think that's really the flaw, if there is one, in something like this, and again, the Beast Wars aspect is amazing. I would have liked a little bit more, uh, what do we call it? Generation 2 aspect because I was waiting for other characters to show up, but they never do. <laughs> you know, it's put it up. But again, that's my brain working, right? I mean, oh, I'm a big fan. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see this. I know this is going to lead to that, but it doesn't. I don't know what it does in the long run because I know this is definitely be a trilogy I watch over and over. That I'll say right as I end this. 
even the flaws in season two, season three, calling them Earthrise and Kingdom. Even with the flaws, I love it. I'm happy it was done. Kudos to everybody. I'm just trying to point out some of the flaws, and I wouldn't be surprised if people came to me and said, you know what, Joe? I agree the first season. I was really excited, but I was disappointed in season two and three. And I mean, I wouldn't maybe not, I wouldn't agree because obviously I like it, but I could understand and point out things and go along with some of the aspects that do bring this down a level or not if you're giving it a rating system. But in any case, give it a shot. Watch it. If you haven't watched them, you can binge watch these things. They're excellent. They're really short. You can. And that's what I really love about the first season. Like I said, it's done so well and tight that you almost, uh, you know, jinx yourself, you know, the creators. But that's all I'll sum it up. Give it a shot. Transformers War for Cybertron. Season 1 is Siege. Season 2, or Chapter 2, however they're fucking calling these things, is Earthrise. And this podcast has been about Kingdom. Chapter 3. I think a great blend. Give it a shot. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to everybody later.